Invitational Strictly 2023 ILHC. Let's go. <laughs> this competition is the perfect equalizer between the audience member who wants to be entertained and the hardcore practitioner who generally has a greater context and appreciation of balance. This format helps the main hardcore Lindy Hopper remember to entertain the audience and their peers. You can do both, it's not impossible. I know most of these contestants will have superb technical ability and I wanna just do something different today. I wanna see number one, who can be innovative with new ideas, but I wanna also see how well they can entertain the audience without depending too much on fancy tricks. I say this because the audience generally, not all the time, but they tend to respond to anything that looks exciting, whether it's difficult or not. Sometimes it's merited because, you know, the dancers have synchronized their timing with the music, but a lot of times dancers ignore the music and just regurgitate their hyper choreographed sets. I'm guilty of doing this also sometimes. I just wanna see something that's innovative and organic. But before we do that, don't forget to check out the benefits of becoming a Street Smart Swing member. You get access to the Lindy Hop Blueprint, which is my success system that helps dancers really understand the core principles that make Lindy Hop work fundamentally. Once you can grasp what master dancers understand, you will be able to grasp the principles of Lindy Hop at your current level, which will ultimately put you in the driver's seat to fix your own dancing without always having to need a teacher. Members of the Street Smart Swing community also receive personalized feedback on their social dancing. They will also receive 24 hour access to all classes posted each week. So check out the benefits in the description below. Let's start things off with our first couple, Joe and Felipe.
And one more time for Danny Donaguchi and the Revisionists. Tearing it up out there. That was the mid-tempo. Or as I call it after the pandemic, the fast tempo. Now come, here comes the much faster one. All right, let's get it started.
take a vote, can you make some noise? was great oh yes i was quite surprised that the band played such a mid-tempo pace for the first half of the competition this really made it easy for me to see how well the contestants could balance their abilities moving to a mid-tempo. I feel it's harder to look impressive at this tempo for advanced dancers. They end up looking good enough to look better than the audience member who might be more average, but not nuanced enough to rival some of the more uh, master level Lindy Hoppers who've been around for like 20 years. I think it's a lot easier to dance to faster tempos, which tends to hide the nuances and, and imperfections. I first got to show you guys the part I liked. It was just this little moment with Sky and Frida. It was hilarious. I mean, it wasn't anything that was intentionally done, or maybe it was. But Frida lost her shoe in the middle of her fast set of choreography and didn't miss a beat. I don't even think her partner was aware, which made it even more impressive. Another quality I enjoyed from them was how well they matched each other in terms of control. I felt their slow and fast sets were the most controlled in the whole competition. I will give you that. The part I was least impressed with was how generic it felt. I felt like everything they did, I. I've kind of seen it many times over. There's nothing wrong with that, and I feel like th there's a format for just staying in your lane and social dancing, but for me, I feel their sets mainly appeal to the hardcore Lindy Hop practitioner who hasn't been around as long and who may have been seeing those moves for the first time. So as good as their control was, their overall presentation didn't fit within the parameters of what I was looking for. Now, the other couple I really liked for one particular moment, actually two, was Niels and Bianca. Of course, everybody knows how good they are when it comes to dancing to fast tempos. And my favorite moment was the quick aerial they implemented. There was two of them, in fact. The first one I really enjoyed because Bianca starts moving towards Niels and then Niels brings her back where she started. It was a really superb sequence that demonstrates how they took a move that existed before and added something new to it. They have so much innovative work that fits this kind of template in the world of aerials. And unfortunately, I feel like they don't have that much competition in this generation of swing dancers in terms of aerials. I don't know why that is, but it just seems like everyone that's trying to do aerials aside from them are just doing the same ones we've seen for over 70 years. And for me, that's great for entertaining a first time visitor in the audience, but it leaves the hardcore enthusiast just craving more. Now, there was only one couple who had the full package tonight, guys. And the reason I feel they had the full package is because their mid-tempo set was just as impactful as their fast tempo set. This couple that I felt that just really crushed it, the entire competition was Felipe and Joe. From the very beginning, <laughs> especially on just the, their slower set, I knew they were going to be special. They were relaxed and just were able to show us familiar movements in a very controlled way, much like Sky and Frida, but they also had added some fancy transitions that synchronized perfectly to the music. I felt most of their transitions were so controlled that they stood out even more than trying to do a bunch of fancier moves that may have been timed well, but may have also jeopardized the main qualities that made them look good. Both of their slow and fast tempos were equal in overall impact. I can't say that for every other couple, in fact. I don't, I don't feel anybody else came close, aside maybe from Sky and Frida, to matching Felipe and Joe's control in both 
uh, their sets. So big shout out to Felipe and Joe for crushing it. I thought it was fabulous. I'm not gonna say everybody else was whack, but I just feel like everybody else needed to step up their game. I wanna give a big shout out to all of those who are supporting this channel on Patreon. If you guys are enjoying this swing dance analysis content, consider supporting the channel on Patreon. So who did you like best? Let me know in the comment section below. If I don't see your comments below, hopefully I get a chance to help some of you in my class online. Take care.